Hello, readers of Sonoma Sommelier Wine Magazine. I'm Robert O'Mauer, your host and Sonoma Valley wine critic, reporting from my office in the town of Sonoma, Sonoma Valley, ABA, California. Working straight through with the flu today, so please excuse my voice. On Friday, February 12th, the Sonoma Valley Vintners and Growers Alliance held their annual Vino Alivio uh, 2010 celebration at the Lodge at Sonoma. Over 50 uh, Sonoma Valley wineries were in attendance, 20 Sonoma Valley restaurants uh, pouring and serving food to hundreds of guests um, attending the sold out event. Guests flooded in from all over the country. I've talked to a lot of folks, people from everywhere. So I say take that recession and welcome to Sonoma Valley. Um, I was there with special uh, press pass uh, privileges there, courtesy of Growers and Vintners Alliance. Special thanks to them and the Lodge at Sonoma. Uh, so what were my reflections on the night? Let's go straight to the wine highlights. My top 10 tied for number one. Uh, Ty Caton's new series, Caton Collection, 100% single varietal, single block Cabernets off the State Mountainside Vineyard. The upper bench designate uh, vintage. Uh, 2008 is destined uh, for a classical 95 to 100 point score, showing noble natural mountainside, uh, Bordeaux-like refinement, um, grace. It's going to get Tykeen's wine over that 94 point hump at Sonoma Somalia, a 95 point hump um, into that higher classic wine range. Uh, this wine will release at 50, uh, though I suggested 225 to 325 per bottle to the Caton Shock. Say so move over Staglin and Harlan. Uh, there's more to come. Uh, more on that later. Uh, tied for first, Sojourn's uh, new release, Mountain Terraces Cabernet from arguably America's most noble Cabernet vineyard, uh, Mountain Terraces. Uh, following the footsteps of the 2005, the, the balance, style, and natural mountainside structure pushed the special bottle into the top again. Um, I reviewed this wine pre-release to a score of 98 points last year, it must have been eight months ago, back in 2009. Um, my number two cab of the year, only beaten by another Eric Bradley made wine uh, by Aldelsa Their Estate uh, Reserve Cabernet. Um, it's since developed, uh, well, a lot more future. Uh, it's certainly living up to the score. I expect a great ageability out of this wine. Buy a few cases, stack it up, stock it up. It's it's the best deal you're going to find um, on quality Cabernet at that price. It's as good as any cult wine from Napa. Um, from uh, winemaker um, slash owner Eric Bradley and company. Um, another he was my SonomaSom.com number one winemaker of the year. Uh, Sharp Cellars new black label Haley's Creek Estate Zinfandel. Um, made by wine mastermind Rolando Herrera. Um, this wine comes with the Shocking Hill, Sonoma Valley District. It's battling it out um, for a Zinfandel dominance, in my opinion, with a Haywood's Rocky Terrace single block Zinfandel. Uh, it's a battle between two almost adjacent vineyard blocks in the Shocking Hill, Zinfandel region of Sonoma Valley. That's the southern, southwesternmost district of the Mayakamas range in Sonoma Valley, basalt rock, Zinfandel grown on it. Um, both wines have been fully reviewed at SonomaSom.com, go check them out. Um, they're two of the best, well, they're the two best Zins of the year and almost perfect scores. Um, and they are probably the country's best two Zinfandels without additives. Uh, so much mega purple wine dye, pH adjustments, additives of all sorts, added to a lot of the best known Zins out there. Um, but with that basalt rock, you get those dark flavors naturally. So you don't have to add the, you don't have to pull out your container of uh, mega purple and add the dye to the wine. You don't have to add all these artificial things to get that dark, spicy flavor to the Zen. Um, that's so common in Zinfandel winemaking. Um, all right, big shock of the night. Um, shouldn't be a shock at all. Parmalee Hill Estate Syrah. That's um, a lot of Parmalee Hill designated Syrahs out there, but this is from the actual Parmalee Hill. Uh, winery itself. Um, famous Parmalee Hill, Syrah Vineyard, Southwestern, Sonoma Valley. I call this sub-region and I'm pushing for a sub-region called either Felder Creek, Sonoma Valley or Fog Knoll, Sonoma Valley. That area around Felder Creek needs its own sub-ABA uh, for Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, and Syrah. Uh, this Syrah has perfect mid-weight classic grace, vibrance, death-defying distance on the palate, uh, winemaking by another top 10 winemaker, Don Van Staveren. Um, he's always exciting to follow. This wine should be an example to every Syrah winemaker in this country. Uh, 
We'll look for this wine to review between 93 points and 95 points. It'll be one of the top straws of the year. Um, a Ty Caton's new vintage of his estate Cabernet. This is a program he's had around for a while. This is 08 vintage. Uh, it's shocking. It's going to exceed the Arity Sky High 95 point estate Cabernet from the 07 vintage. Um, the, the shocking part of this for me is the, the future development and style. Ty Caton's going from making red wine so big and powerful, they make most Napa cabs kind of wet their pants and call for their mama, uh, the, to, to the Ty Caton that shows more style, grace, elegance, depth. Can't elegance and Ty Caton in the same sentence, um, or Ty Caton wines rather. Um, but he's going there. Um, ageable, classic, mountainside, Bordelais like. Um, because um, with Cabernet, bigger is not always better. So I expect to see the wine um, review between 96 and 98 points. It's going to be a steal at the price. Uh, Ty Caton's also, he was one of my top three winemakers of the year, uh, battling out for the top position. Uh, he'll be climbing even higher this year at this rate. Um, his refinement, uh, trimming some of the brute power and force off and uh, replace for, uh, in place of refinement. Uh, McLeod Estate in Zinfandel, uh, from their estate vineyard. Um, up Valley, Sonoma Valley, uh, showed amazingly well. Um, I hope to see the new release score between 94 points and 97 points uh, when I review it. Um, the finish really carries the wine to new heights. Uh, let me say, I can already see, it's going to be a really tough top 10 winemakers of the year for 2010. Insane new competition and quality, battling it out especially for the top five spots. Uh, amazing wines going strong that were shown last night on my Get Them Before They Go library list or Highway 12. White Label Bordeaux Blend uh, from Saris Ranch. We've got to speed this thing up, sorry. Emory Estate Cabernet, Deborah Effect Emory Estate Cabernet. Uh, Span Vineyards uh, Cabernet, uh, Mountain Terraces. Uh, Haywood, the La Chamazelle bottling of Zinfandel. Uh, was my number one Zen of the year. They still have some, buy it. Um, let's see, uh, also from a top 10 winemaker of the year, Peter Haywood. Uh, Glen Lyon, uh, Parmalee Hill Shard. Her Chardonnay was pouring great yesterday, really showed the vineyard characteristics, showed great varietal characteristics and great restraint. Uh, Squire Friedel, uh, another top 10 winemaker of the year. Uh, some wines that will be new to the review, I'm excited, uh, I was excited to taste, were Westwood's Annadale Estate Vineyard, that's kind of confusing because Annadale Estate's its own winery, but Annadale Vineyard, I'll call it, uh, Syrah, uh, new 07 vintage um, of Atmosphere Syrah. So both of the Syrahs are a perfect balance. Um, Annadale's got great energy, great direction, um, very classic. Um, Atmosphere, this, this new vintage has a little bit of a, a meatiness, maybe a peppered beef that's a very classic San, uh, San Josef um, Roan. Um, Robert Hunter Pinot Noir, Curveball Spinning White. <laughs> um, that's that's going to show interesting uh, in my, you know, an interesting way in my review. Um, upcoming winemakers to watch were Bart Hansen, owner winemaker of Dane Sellers. He's only out on his second vintage. I, I really want to give this guy in on the review. Um, he has a whole new array of small production technique, small vineyard wines from solid vineyards all over the Sonoma Valley, west, east, south. He's all over the, he's using vineyard sources all over the place. He might be one of the few people um, making a Bordeaux and, and Zen from uh, various sites from all over, not really in just one vineyard or two vineyards. Um, he's doing a really great job of reflecting a lot of different microclimates. Westwood winemaker and owner John Kelly uh, for Rhone and uh, Burgundy varietals. Bono Winery uh, for top-notch Chardonnays. They get better every year. I'm really excited about reviewing the Chardonnays coming soon. Um, it looks like uh, 2010 will not only be the year of the tiger, but will also be the year where the tiny production winemaker slash owner wineries grab greater share of the pie. Uh, Stoma Valley wine production um, continues further in the direction of, of elevated quality, is, is more single vineyard, tiny production, uh, style wines are being made by winemakers who actually own a major share in their companies. Uh, special thanks to my sponsor, Sunflower Cafe, in the Sonoma Plaza, town of Sonoma, uh, California, Opus Horticulture, uh, the world famous chef Andrew Yeager in New Orleans, by his cookbooks at Amazon and Barnes and Noble's bookstores. Uh, also special thanks to Grant Rayside and Peter Spann at the Sonoma Valley Vintners and Growers Alliance uh, for making my uh, press pass arrangements. Uh, this is Robert O'Maurin, um, SonomaSom.com, most accurate and detailed review on wine today.